Tomas, I need you in the pub. Your father's not back yet and I have a women's meeting. Will you... What's that behind your back? Uh, nothing, Mammy. Nothing, is it? Give it here. Now. The art of war, Lord save us. Have you learned nothing? It's not that kind of a war book. It's about using strategy and fooling your enemy. Right now, I'm your enemy. Pub. Now. Now. Can I get my book? Now, I said. The art of war, God. Fractured. A family, a nation, a dream. April 1921. Are we good, Tomas? Everyone's out, O'Reilly. Daddy as well. Where's your mother? She has a habit of throwing me out. You have a habit of giving her good reason to. She's gone to one of her women's meetings. Teresa's giving a lecture on how to treat gunshot wounds. Jesus. Now on her, that'd be pretty gory. She certainly doesn't hold back. Not a bad skill to know these days, though. Hmm. O'Reilly? Tomas? Mr. Milani, sir. Good to see you again. This man here is Tom Farrell. My vice commandant for the Leakslip column. Another Farrell from Leakslip? You must grow on trees over there. My brother Jim was with you on the ambush here in February, right? He said you were some shot. Got that RIC fella right in the head. Well, fair play to you. We need snipers like you. <laughs> Let's sit down over here. It's more out of the way. Can I get you some tea, boys? Jesus. Some pub? I don't know. Are you old enough for tea yet, Tomas? <laughs> <laughs> well... If tea is good enough for Pat Colgan, it's good enough for us. Thanks, Tomas. I'll be back in a moment. The tea is made, sir. So, this is it, eh? The only four lads left around here we can trust. Sean arrested. Colgan and Harris lifted. I hear Colgan has put order on that camp in County Down. Mm, That he has. Thanks, Tomas. I'll just pour, sir. Here's to Sean. A good soldier... A good brother to Tomas here. Himself and Colgan will have those boys in Ballykinlar trained up like machines in no time. Slauncha. You'd want to raise more than a cup of tea as a toast if it's Sean you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we at? Well, as you know, I'm the only commandant in the area left, which is far from ideal. Ah, you're not that bad. <laughs> there's a lot of good men gone. Nearly half our active units, and there's more being arrested every day. Most of us on the run lying low. And I'm supposed to be a teacher as well. (laughs) What are you teaching them in school? How to take out a policeman from 30 yards? Most of the lads that haven't been arrested yet are running around now like headless chickens. Yeah, there's a fair few of them are chickens, all right. We need to put some order on those fellas. What do you propose we do? Well, as I see it, we have three problems. We're missing good people in leadership. Ambushes are getting more and more dangerous. And worst of all... The men are terrified of getting involved in the first place for fear of reprisals from the Tans. We need to get these lads some target practice. Toughen them up. We don't have enough ammo to go around to waste it firing on each other. Oh, right. Yeah. I've been thinking about women. Jesus, we've all been thinking about women. Uh, No, I mean for manoeuvres. I know the kind of manoeuvres you're thinking of. (laughs) Operations, then. Ambushes. Is it Lizzie O'Neill you're thinking of for your manoeuvres? Actually, yes, it is. I thought that. Just not in the way you're thinking of. Maybe that way too. All right, all right. Leave the fellow alone. What are you thinking of? Well, I was thinking about that RIC ambush up the road there and how I hadn't realised Lizzie was involved. One of our best. I never heard about Lizzie joining up. So it's fair to say that if I didn't hear about her, then the RIC or the Tans didn't hear about her either. What are you getting at? How many men are interned in Ballykinlar? Two. Three hundred. Keeps growing every day. Get to the point, Tomas. Nearly two thousand. Jesus, that many. And then there's all the new camps built because that one is full. Spike Island in Cork, Bear Island, Gormanstown, and now at Hare Camp in the Curra. There 
must be thousands upon thousands. And how many women have been arrested and interned? Oh. Barely a handful. Do you mean... Women aren't being arrested. The RIC can't search them, so they can't arrest them. Why not get more women involved? But women are involved. They run the safe houses, run messages. But they can do so much more. Act as spies, handle munitions, maybe get involved in an ambush or two if they want. De Valera won't let women get involved in any kind of combat duties. He stopped them from that after the rising. Yeah, well, that's only because Connolly was dead. Irish men and Irish women. That's what he had in the proclamation. Cum and the man have been sent back to the kitchens thanks to Dev. But there's a lot of them that would love to get in on the action. Lizzie's well up for it, all right. And I'm sure they'd be more willing to get involved. Ellen Kenny, for instance. All the while the British are looking to pin something on the men, the women could be running about on operations undetected, hiding in plain sight. Mm, There's something in that, all right. It's against what GHQ would propose, but these are desperate times. And they don't need to know, so... We'd have to be careful not to go with coming them on. They might be known, so they might be watched. Maybe, if they haven't been arresting them, it's because they're watching them go about their duties and following them to meetings or safe houses. Maybe that's how they're spoiling the ambushes. Mm. It's a possibility. But none of the women were involved in any of the failed ambushes lately. Except Lizzie, of course. But sure, she was in as much danger as any of us. I'd say that's fairly unlikely. They have enough to be doing trying to catch us lot without following the coming as well. We should get some outsiders as well, though. Women they'd never expect. What, like your mother? <laughs> <laughs> There's more chance of Mossy Kinsel being made a saint than there is getting her involved. Who are you thinking of? Well, I hadn't really anyone in mind, to be honest. What about Mary? Who's Mary? His sister. She's always given out to me about what we're doing. But she's got two brothers in the IRA now. One of them locked up. We don't exactly see eye to eye on that. And anyway, she's... She's what? She wouldn't be up for it. I'm fairly certain she wouldn't do it. Jesus. Mother and daughter the same. Sony, the Barry boys are brave enough. She's brave enough in her own way. How about Sissy? I haven't seen her around much lately, but she's fairly feisty. I'd say she'd be handy with a revolver, if you could control her. Maybe. I haven't seen much of her either, though. Well, who have you seen lately, then? Um. Oh, come on now. There's no point in suggesting an idea and not having anyone to propose for it. Who else could there be around here, Tomas? Well, uh, m- maybe, but I, I don't know what her leanings are, or if even she has any leanings one way or the other. Who? What about Teresa? <laughs> Teresa, the mad one. Who's Teresa? <laughs> She's not that mad. She's fairly odd now, you have to admit. She is, but I'd say she'd be pretty ruthless if it came down to it. Would she be reliable? I don't know. She certainly has a very clinical way of thinking. Very exact, by the book. Would she take orders well? I suppose so. And she's a memory like a photograph. I reckon she could relay coded messages without them written down. Perfect, to the letter. She's teaching that women's group right now how to treat gunshot wounds. She sounds perfect. Right, Tomas. Good man. You get her signed up and we'll find a good mission for her. I I don't know if she'd do it, sir. I've no idea what she thinks about the whole mess at the moment. I haven't talked to her about it. I suppose I haven't really talked to her at all. Well, talk to her then. Find out. I will, but give me some time to scope her out. Make sure she doesn't lean the other way and give us up. Fine. That's a smart idea, Tomas. Thank you, sir. Well, before you get too far ahead of yourselves, there's also the small matter of what seems to be an informer giving our plans away to the RIC. That day a few weeks back when we laid in wait on the three roads between Leakslip, Celebridge and Minute and not one member of the RIC ventured out. They must have been tipped off. Are we sure that was an informer though? I mean, it was lashing rain that day. Maybe they had no reason to go out in the rain. What about last Sunday in Lucan? We waited on the side of the river the police always go along. And what happens? They pass on the other side about 80 yards away. Too far to land a shot. Emptied our revolvers for nothing. Well... I'm fairly sure Mossy Kinsel is an informer. He's a shifty character. He always seems to be snooping around. His only loyalty is to himself. That's for certain. I saw him over in Leakslip a couple of weeks ago and he laughing and chatting with the RIC sergeant there. What was he doing in Leakslip? Up to no good, no doubt. Probably slipping messages about plans he might have heard about. It feels like all our plans are being sabotaged right now. 
We have to take action and strike back. Exactly. We need to teach them a lesson. They can't inform on us, have us arrested or shot, and expect to get away with it. Look, I don't like the man either. He's caused trouble here more than a few times, but did you actually see him passing information? Well, we don't have to shoot him. A punishment beating, that would sort him out. But we shouldn't be going after informers to get rid of them just because we can. Don't be getting soft on us again, Tomas. I'm not. I'm just saying that there are other ways. I've been thinking a lot about this lately. Look, we have a system that works. We plan ambushes, we execute them. If an informer sabotages our plans and puts us in danger, we have to get rid of them. Simple as that. But there are other ways where nobody need get hurt or feel they have to take a life. But still bring the Empire to its knees. Like what? Most of our plans these days involve ambushes of some kind. Shootings, bombings... Dangerous things to do if you care about reprisals against you or your family, or if you care about having murder on your soul. It's hardly murder, it's... it's shootings. Look, nobody wants to take a life, but we're in a war now, and sometimes killings are needed. You know that, Tomas. How many million Britons are there? Do you really think that you killing a few ex-army tans, or even Irishmen in the RIC, is driving them out? They'll come back with a thousand more, and a hundred thousand more. Good riddance to them. They deserve to die. The lot of them. Well, I'll leave them all dead in a ditch. I don't care. Lads, this has become a brutal war. After that bloody Sunday in Croke Park last November, the number of beatings and arrests has multiplied. Do you think we don't know that? And as for shootings and bombings, we're killing them, so they kill us. So we kill them, round and round, in a big, vicious circle. It's getting out of hand. What do you expect us to do? There's 500 people dead in the four months since the start of the year. For every RIC man or British Army killed, they'll just bring in more tans, more auxiliaries. We can't just kill them all. So what's your grand plan then? What have you figured out that the lads in GHQ haven't? Kildare is a garrison county. There's more soldiers and army barracks in Kildare than in most counties. That's why we haven't been able to do much up to now. You can't move for soldiers or RIC. There's a hell of a lot more of them than there is us. I'm still not hearing a plan. Give him a chance. Look, we can't beat them by the numbers, but we can beat them by disrupting how they function. What do you mean, how they function? How does an army work? Think about it. They work on their stomach. That's what they march on, you idiot. Oh, right. An army works as one unit. Information is gathered. It's passed up the chain of command to the top. A decision is then made by the top brass. That decision comes back down through the chain as orders for the troops. They mobilise and carry out those orders. That's a fair summary. Based on the result of how those orders went, they send information back up the chain, etc, etc, until the next action. It only works because it's all connected. If you break those connections, it all falls apart. Break the connections? Disruption is the plan. We throw as many spanners into the works as we can find. Like what exactly? First thing, information. An army feeds on information. Without it, it can't make decisions. Every day, mail dispatches carry reports and maps and God knows what else up to army command in Park Gate Street and down to all the barracks. Raid the mail trains. Raid the mail trains. Stop army HQ getting the information in the first place. We've done it before. All right, we can do that. Second thing, orders and urgent information. The post is no good if they need to make quick decisions or react to something immediately. So they use the telephones and the telegraph. If we cut the lines, they won't be able to contact each other quickly. That makes sense. Third, mobilisation. If they can't telephone or send messages between the stations and barracks, they have to send men over with orders directly. Over the last while, we've been getting into gun battles with them in ambushes. But all we really need to do is just stop the orders getting through. But that's what the ambush is for. Take out the man and you take out the message. Why not just steal the police bicycles? Or puncture or break the wheels on their cars and trucks? Blow a hole in a few bridges if you want. No one need get hurt. And the orders don't get through. It's the message that's important, not the man. Exactly. That's good work, Tomas. Did you think of all this yourself? I think Mick Collins has a fair handle on it too, to be honest. I was just trying to think of what's best for us here in Kildare. What's simple, but effective. Hmm. I thought Sean was supposed to be the brains of the family. 
He certainly gives you a run for his money, O'Reilly. I'd say I could beat him in a sprint all the same. But what about informers? It's all very well bringing down the might of the British Empire by cutting a few telephone wires and stealing a few bikes, but what if an informer gives us away and sets us up to be killed? Any informer that's identified as such is to be shot. That's an order. Yeah, but the problem is that we don't know who the informer or informers are. They need to be caught in the act. I did have an idea on this as well. Jesus, you're full of ideas today, aren't you? What were you thinking? Why not let the informers go about their business? (laughs) <laughs> what, just let them at it? Let us be caught? Well, no, not exactly. We've a few suspects, right? Mm-hmm. How about we let each of them accidentally overhear a juicy bit of information and let them pass it on? But not real information. Is that what you're saying? Correct. A nice juicy bit of false information that an informer couldn't wait to pass on. Nothing involving us, naturally. Just something that we heard. <laughs> a wild goose chase. But the best bit is that we give each suspect a different juicy bit of false information. And then we wait and see what one gets acted on. And that's your informer. By God. That's a great plan. We can tell one of them where there's supposed to be a stash of rifles and see if it's raided. We can tell another one where and when an ambush is supposed to happen and see if they bring reinforcements. Oh, whoever this fella is... He's in for a big surprise. Fair play, Tomas. That thinking is... Well, it's beyond your years. Let's see if it works first. It will, O'Reilly. There's a serious lack of leadership in Minute at the moment, Tomas. That's some... very impressive thinking. I'm going to make you vice-captain for Minute Company until further notice, reporting to me. But... But I'm vice-captain! And now Tomas is as well. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll be off, so. We'll get to work on some of those disruption techniques. I'll take Leakslip and Selbridge if you can organise Minute and Kilcock. Yes, sir. And I'd like you to put that plan to flush out any informers into effect as soon as you can. Yes, sir. There was nothing planned for the next few weeks. Maybe if I work on getting some ideas together for operations down the line, I could set up the informer traps just before them. That way, we flush them out at just the right time before the British know they're caught. That's good thinking. Yes, do that. And Teresa, don't forget her. Goodbye, Tomas. Yes! Fractured is a Down at Heel production. All episodes were written by Joe Bergen, Brendan Farrell, Claire Joyce and Martina Riley. Sound engineer is Brendan Farrell. Fractured is supported by Kildare County Council through a bursary from Creative Ireland. It is also supported by the County Kildare Decade of Commemorations Programme and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2012-2023 to initiative.